And now let's begin by testing out and seeing how this little app games portable Mega Drive whatever ultimate console is like when we play it. So here we've got here we've got power button here turns on and as you can see it turns on quite nicely now unfortunately I've been using it quite a bit and as a result the battery has been used so but regardless let's have a look um we've got Alex Kids yeah this is just all the games now I have tested this and all the games run most of them run really well um I'm actually going to be honest with you a lot of them run better than the at games version or what I'm trying to say is there's one little feature on, with the home console version that was really off-putting and that was how slowed down the music is now you might notice that the music is still a bit off but it hasn't been slowed down so whilst the sound chip is absolutely like off-putting at least it hasn't been slowed down but otherwise when you play it it's actually really good like it actually feels like really easy to play now I'm sorry about the glare I apologize for it but the controls are really smooth like this is really impressive the d-pad just feels so natural and easy and it doesn't feel like I'm having any troubles, you know, with any of the buttons or any of the controls. Now, I have already downloaded certain games on the SD card. In fact, there's already one inside. Let me just pause. See, I already put an SD card in there. It slots in like a DS, 3DS, or Vita, or Vita card in their respective portable systems. But the, the idea is it's just um, really awesome that you can actually put in whatever Mega Drive game you want. I have tried. This does not work with uh, 32x games. It will work with any region version of any game, Mega Drive game or Genesis game, but it will not play 32x or Sega CD games. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, no, I've been focused on talking, and as a result, I die. Typical reviewer syndrome. <laughs> so yes, so we can get at. And you can easily get out of the game simply by pressing the menu button, which is really awesome. So that takes you back to the menu. Now, if you chose to, you can insert an SD card and then you can actually put in whatever games you want. See, I've already put a whole selection of games. And the reason why I'm really impressed by this is because often when you have Sega Mega Drive collections, they rarely or not at all put these more niche games or games you think should have been ported like you know someone can just acquire the license cheaply or something like I'm talking about like these Mickey Mouse games Earthworm Jim well actually that has been released but the point is um what about Sunset Riders I haven't seen a port of that Splatterhouse well you've seen that being ported I suppose on the Splatterhouse game but you got Lemmings you got Hang Time I haven't seen Hang Time Mortal Kombat 3 has been done, I suppose, but Shinobi's there. Captain Planet, I don't know why I've got Captain Planet and Spider-Man. I guess I can understand why no one would want most of this. What about the Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist, which is pretty much like a semi-port of uh, Turtles in Time. World of Illusion, Goals and Ghosts, oh, that's been ported. Like, I just think the Mickey Mouse games, I wish they were ported to the bloody virtual console or given a re-release on the 3DS given that there's already going to be another one in the illusion series called Epic Mickey Power of Illusion which is meant to be like you know Castle of Illusion, World of Illusion sort of meshed together that's really awesome so if we open up this game and yes there is loading time so um, I just want to mention that the screen is also really good it's actually quite it's very clear the graphics uh, look good on this the only issue I have is there's a little bit of a glare thing but I think that's typical of LCD screens but it's sometimes it just feels like it's got that um really easy glare issue like 
if you tip it as so much as you know a little you feel like it goes a little bit off I, I guess it's kind of reminiscent of the old TVs I guess that's what happens when you try and you know otherwise but basically it's just really good so yeah I mean the game controls really well now there is another feature that's really good about this you can actually play this on the television so in order to play it on the TV you just need to get simple AV cables and the little um you know the headphone thingy not headphone thingy just the AV port whatever it is I can show you it very quickly it won't take too long. Unfortunately, in order to do it, you have to actually turn off the system, and then you can actually, and then turn it on again once you've plugged it in. So I'll be very quick and just show you how they appear on the TV. Now, there isn't really that much of an issue with the way it displays on TV, but there is something you should know, and that is. It do doesn't show in full resolution. Uh, so, that we would sorry about the TV. World map darts. My apologies, I incidentally left the TV on. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, just trying to work this out. Typical me. So, I think this is the right channel. Let's see, this turns on now. Oops, don't think that turned on for some reason. Oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong hole, no wonder. <laughs> there we go, now it's on the TV. Now, as you can see, now, the resolution has been stretched out as a result of my TV, but if you have like a CRT TV of some sort, you shouldn't have an issue with resolution, but this is pretty much what happens when you stretch it out. Now, it's actually, it actually all looks just the same, and you can you just use this, um, you know, your handheld as well. So, if you want to play on the TV and have a larger resolution, you're more than welcome to. So, that's where it's... So that's where it's uh, plugged in, that's where you plug it in. It's just a normal AV cable, that's all it is. You know, you just have yellow and white. You only need, you only need one white one because um, the Mega Drive was always mono. It was uh, always just mono sound, so it doesn't really matter. Although it will come out in, you know, stereo type sound. Not completely stereo, but you know what I mean. So if you pick another game, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, you'll find it plays exactly the same, it's just bigger screen. Now, like I said before, it's really stretched out. Like, it's been so forcefully stretched out that, you know, you can almost just tell that the writing is so wide, it's ridiculous. So, you should really have a CRT TV for something like this, or you'll have to fix, you have to fix the resolution. Now, like I said, you know, it really depends on your needs. Now, there is another issue I find, and this is a real shame, disappointment, you cannot plug in a Sega Mega Drive controller. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I haven't had it, I'm, I can't control this right now, cause, yeah. But basically, um, basically, uh, this is it. That's all I can really say about it. There's not much else I can say about, you know, this system, cause, you know, it's just a portable Mega Drive at games, ultimate, whatever thingy. So, yeah. So, this is good. It's very, I got it very cheaply. I got it for like 40 bucks, like I said. I mean, you can put in as many games as you like. Just remember, not all of them will work. It really depends on what system you use. I mean, I mean, no, it really depends on, um, you know... What the, how the games are emulated. I mean, some of them just don't emulate at all. Some of them will not run. You know, it's all trial and error. The ones I found all work, 
but I had to remove some and some of them would only partially run and then they just wouldn't let me select. There was even a weird one where it was called uh, Another World. It's a very um, classic game. It would play the intro, but once I got to the menu screen, I couldn't select a single thing or it would just not function properly. So I had to delete it. So it really depends. Just, you know, try your best if you get this, you know, put whatever you can on your SD card and you'll be fine. This isn't, this isn't implying that this is a good replacement for your Mega Drive, but it's good if you want something cheap on the go or if you want to... Or if you're like moving out or, you know, if, if you want to have something quick to plug in and play, this is definitely for you. It's good for Mega Drive fans, but just be wary. The sound is very off. Like the music is really like, it's like raised by an octave. But thankfully it is better than, you know, the home console version, which I found, you know, if you remember my previous video, it was really like... Like, the sound was completely slowed down. Like, everything was slowed down in terms of sound. Like, the, the gameplay is still the same. So, you notice how it just sounds different to what it should be? It all really depends. Alright, so that's about it. As I conclude with the Golden Axe 2 intro, I would like to say farewell and thank you for listening. See ya!